What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the show. Super pumped you're here. We have an amazing guest for you today. He is actually a book publisher. So if you are interested in writing your own book or, or you thought about creating your own book, you definitely want to pay attention to this episode. Um, this is going to be a good one. So let's see. He's an international number one best-selling author himself, having authored uh, six Amazon number one best-selling books. The Power of the Published is his most recent work, and he has also actually helped create and launch more than 50 other best-selling books uh, for his clients as well, which is incredible. Um, he speaks across the nation on the power of publishing, and he's the founder of Ignite Press, which is a hybrid publishing company that specializes in helping entrepreneurs as well as businesses by becoming best-selling authors. Uh, I'm sorry, as well as business and medical professionals. Uh, ignite their businesses by becoming best-selling authors. In 2019, he founded the Book Publishers Network, which is a group of publishers, publishing consultants, and book coaches, as well as other uh, book professionals. He's also a sought-out uh, speaker, coach, and consultant by authors and marketing experts worldwide. With a passion for entrepreneurialism, that's a word, right? <laughs> Everett helps his clients become recognized as experts in their fields through speaking and authorship while allowing his clients to focus on their own areas of giftedness, which is something we hold very true to our hearts here at The Rising Entrepreneur as well. So please welcome to the show, Everett O'Keefe. Hey, thank you so much, Corey, Nathan. Just appreciate uh, you guys having me on here. We have some fun. Let's talk about how books can like impact people in their businesses and in their lives. No doubt, man. No doubt. I, I will just say books have definitely impacted me. I think Nathan, you could probably agree, huh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Actually, um, interestingly enough, right, I didn't uh, read a book for like 10 years there for a minute. And then, uh, and then I learned just, I got into books again and then started reading, you know, a book a week, a couple books a week. And, and <laughs> I've read several hundred books since then that have changed my life. So I know the power of it to change your life as a consumer. But then I also understand as a marketer and as a business owner, especially as a marketer, the power that a book can have in your business, on your life, your brand, and all that. And so I'm excited to dig into that part of it. I'm mm -hmm. actually <laughs> have a friend of mine right now who is talking to some coaches about his book, talking to a publisher. You probably know him. Um, so you, you went to Funnel Hacking Live, right? Yeah. So, uh, so Devon Brown um, is one of my clients and friends. And so we're actually, uh, he's, he has a book that he's been working on that he's um, put together and now we're actually ready. He's starting to shop it around. So I'll be asking some questions on his behalf and be super curious about what you got for us, Everett. Sounds great. Yeah, so let's get started, everybody. You know, let's dive into sort of like the origin of all of this. I mean, why books? Why, why book publishing? How did you actually get into doing this for people? So it's a bit of a circuitu uh, cir circuitous, circuitous, uh, circular, let's just say that <laughs> route. Uh, you know, in, in college, I was an English lit major and, you know, got my English degree with a plan to teach and then got sucked into the business world and left all that behind. Uh, and uh, later started a marketing company called The Solution Machine. And one of the things that we discovered in that, you know, in our many, the many different things we did in marketing, we started to learn more about book publishing and the power of books in a business and the power of a book to move a needle, move the needle in a huge way for a business or an organization. Um, I guinea pig myself because if I want to try something new, I always try it on myself rather than my clients. Um, and so I sat down with my business partner and I said, Hey, we're going to write a book. And he said, what about, and I said, well, we know video marketing. Let's write it about video marketing. So we sat down, we very rapidly wrote the book, um, and 30 days later launched it and became Amazon number one best selling authors. And I sat there and I watched my book, um, uh, above Malcolm Gladwell, above John Maxwell, above uh, a lot of authors that I have revered. Uh, and uh, so we bested those authors in number one in, in uh, small business marketing, number one in entrepreneurship. Dave Ramsey happened to be number two underneath us at the time. And, <clears throat> and it was then I started to realize, okay, I really think we're on to something here. And uh, I started to realize what this could do. It also 
dramatically improved our business. We really did it as a proof of concept. We weren't really trying to develop more um, video marketing business at the time. We really were trying to just prove the concept of very rapidly writing and launching a book and doing an Amazon bestseller run. Well, what do you think happened? We started getting a bunch of calls. Hey, you know, we'd like you to take on our video marketing. And, uh, you know, I remember at that point we wrote our, uh, our first five digit deal, uh, that came immediately after that book. And, um, so it was very interesting as we watched what it did with our business, we decided this was something really more businesses needed, more entrepreneurs and medical and business professionals could benefit from. So, so, so that's how it started. I, so can I ask you, cause like, I, I just kind of want to get back into, so, so you just decided like you want to do the proof of concept, but like what kind of happened before then to spark your, your interest in it, right? Like, because, and then, cause also, and then the other part of it that I'm, that I'm a little curious about is, is I'll get to that later. So yeah. So kind of what was like, what made you decide to do this experiment in the first place? So uh, I think part of it was born out of frustration. Um, in our marketing business at the time, our real emphasis was actually text, text message marketing, selling SMS marketing services to main street. And that was incredibly frustrating. Uh, it was a commodity. Um, it was something lots of people had to offer and our target market was, uh, you know, let's price this so every business can afford this. Well, you know what that means, right? It means failure. Mm -hmm. And so we were really, really frustrated by that. Um, at the same time, we had been learning more and more about publishing and about the self-publishing world. And, you know, Kindle had come on the scene only a few years before and had really changed the whole publishing scene and moved it from this thing that was in control of, you know, only large publishing houses to now, hey, we can actually get stuff online. It's kind of like the move from TV stations to YouTube, right? Uh, and, and how that completely democratized content. So it was, in the, it was in that light that we decided to look into the publishing side. I got uh, you. So, so understanding... Yeah. I'm just so like you have this background in, in, in literature and you were going to be a teacher and then you become a marketer. So I'm just trying to connect the dots of where, wow. where in order to, cause the, the frustration, I, I really appreciate you going there because as rising entrepreneurs, we have that frustration. We like so many of us are in a competitive market, a competitive industry, and we don't know how to stand out. And so we price our stuff lower to compare and we're frustrated and we don't know where to go. And so yeah. I really appreciate you going there, but there's an aha that I'm not putting together together and because I'm not I didn't go to school for what you went through like when you, you you graduated to be a teacher in literary and then you became a marketer and you have a marketing agency and so you're te you're doing SMS which is this commodity thing but you're also doing video marketing you're a marketer with a literary background and so so there's a there's a definite connection of here's this thing that I love and I've done so you're paying attention to the industry you're looking at things that other people aren't looking at even before you're doing an author because you're like when you start the story it's like well we we're just frustrated and we had a book and we went to number one on Amazon. I'm going, that's cool. But like, there's more to that, you know, that I want to connect the dots because you have a, 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 uh, a history that makes you a professional, that makes you able to teach this on the level and able to do that. No, most people can't just launch a book real quick, get it to number one, be above Dave Ramsey and Malcolm Gladwell and all these people. Like, that's not. So when you go through it, it's like, here's this thing and I want to show you how to do it. But here's this thing that you did with two skill sets that you dedicated your life to doing. And you're looking at these different things that I don't look at that most rising entrepreneurs are listening to aren't looking at. And so I just want them to understand that there's this context that comes into this, first of all, the discovery in the first place, and then to being able to, to execute it, even, even if it's by accident, right? To be able to execute, that's huge. But you have this these two things that are that are super important at least two and there's probably more that allow that accident to happen yeah and and i'll share with you you know we talk about accidents one of them uh one thing to know is that first book was a crappy book like i mean honestly i i look back at it now and it, literally it went from concept to published to amazon number one bestseller in 30 days um, and, and that's why my latest book is about how rapidly authoring a book can ignite your business and your life. 
Um, so, it, you know, and most business people don't have time to like go, you know, sit at a cabin at, at, next to Walden Pond for six months to write their book, right? They don't. And most people don't want to wait for traditional publishing to come around and help them because that window is usually 18 months or more. Well, who wants to do something today that doesn't impact their business for a couple of years? Right. No business right. owner I know. Okay. So it's all about that rapid execution. Well, in our, our, our th then fledgling effort at rapid execution, we made a crappy book. And, then, and on the other hand, it was the perfect book because it did absolutely everything it needed to do and more than things that were unexpected. Um, and so that's the journey that I take my business clients on is helping them rapidly create a business book that's way better than my first one. Um, and, and then take them into a Amazon bestseller launch and make them number one best selling authors so that they get that separation. You know, Nathan, you talked about how we struggle as entrepreneurs to, break out of a commodity and to be, have some, uh, be distinguished from our, uh, competitors. And that was the real reason for a book, right? Was it, there is nothing that separates you, you know, I mean, uh, I, well, I, I shouldn't say nothing. There are some equivalents, right? You, you open up a, you, you create a YouTube channel and if you can get a gazillion subscribers on there, that's a pretty, pretty good point of separation too. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but the book gives us so much credibility and authority and reach, and it's it's a durable marketing tool. And there's there's a there's just a ton of ways that the book is powerful. But that's that's really that's really why we've gone down that road. Yeah, I love that, man. And I, actually, I wanted to jump in here real quick and ask you a question um, because you talked about like obviously traditional publishing takes a long time. It's a huge window, and it's a long runway for you to actually get to a published book that you can now start to, to go to market with and tell people about. Uh, so self-publishing is clearly the way to go. And I think especially now, like I would say that a lot of people are probably starting to look at that. Anybody interested in writing a book, I would say is probably definitely considering the self-publishing option. Now I want to say recently, I have heard though that there are like, there are some benefits to going like traditional publishing route in terms of, um, like the way that they, they, they make sure that the material is sourced properly. And like, I know that there, I, this is something I heard from a recent interview actually, and now it's, it's facing on who it was I was talking about. It might've been Russell Brand or something like that. But anyway, could you talk a little bit about the differences of the two publishing routes? That's a like, great question. Like yeah, what, really good question. what are the pros and cons of going in either direction? So we'll kind of give it to you in a nutshell, because obviously this could be the whole conversation, uh, you know, in fact, I'll be doing a workshop next month on just this idea of public of traditional versus self publishing, but it kind of goes like this. Traditional publishing is kind of like a bank. If you don't need money, you can get, they'll loan you the money. The bank will loan you the money if you don't need it. Traditional publishing, they'll bring you on if you really don't need them. Um, and, and that's basically if you already have a large audience and following, traditional publishing may be a good option um, because, you know, they're, they, you know, the deal is they're in the business of selling books. So they only want to bring on projects that they think are going to sell. And they really want to see that you already have a, a big audience, a big support, and then you can work your rear end off to promote that book. Well, in, in, if I'm correct too, when you go that traditional route, like the book you think you want to, Publish may not be the book you actually publish, which if you just want to be a best-selling author for the sake of the leverage that that brings you, right? And be, I am a New York Times best-selling author. There's a leverage point to that. Like that's important for Devon because of, because of his industry and what he does. If yeah. that is what it is and you have a big following, that can be good. But, but he was also led to know if you're going through that route, the book you think you're writing probably doesn't matter because they're going to rewrite and structure that book. So if you want help with that as well, and you want somebody to do that and you have a big audience, but if you actually want to grow your business and, and, and educate people on the thing that you know, they need to know so that they can have success in, in the area you help them. Then, then, then I'm mean, just, I'm just from the top of my head. I'm just thinking. No, Nathan, that, you're, you're, you're dead on right. You're, you're, you're dead on right. What it, you, you sacrifice a level of creative control that you may or may not be satisfied with. 
Um, and that will come with uh, both in the text of the book as well as the cover of the book, the title of the book, um, and most importantly, how that book is used and what your freedom is and how you use it. Because when you sign a traditional publishing contract, you are signing the rights, uh, the creative rights of that book. You're assigning those to the publisher so that they can use them how they choose. And they will license back to you your content so that you can use your content that you've created in limited ways. Like, for instance, if you decided that you wanted to do a free plus shipping option of your book, that's going to be very difficult with a traditional publisher, okay? Because they're in the business of selling books at retail price through retail channels. And if you're shortcutting that by offering some opt-in on your website so that people can get the book for free plus shipping, or you want to give it to them as a free download, then that's where you're, you're going to find yourself handcuffed. Um, they will allow you, however, to do stuff like, well, you can give away up to 10% of your book or chapter one through three, but nothing beyond that. Um, and then you've got to be really careful because you may be sacrificing the rights to not just that manuscript, but a lot of the concepts in that manuscript that you think you're going to use in other things. You got to be really careful. So, um, there, I mean, there's certainly some landmines in there. And that is not to say that traditional publishing is not a solution. It is. It is a solution in the right circumstances for the right people. Yeah. Um, most of the people I know, they are not the right people in the right circumstances for that. Yeah, it sounds uh, like it's tailored more towards the professional who, like you say, is already established with their concepts. They've got their audience. Everything is basically packaged and is, is selling. And now it's let's get it out to the masses. That would be a yeah. publisher. A traditional yeah, and, and where maybe you have the leverage because of the size of your audience to create the agreement that you want to create. That makes sense. Rather than the cre the agreement that the publisher kind of dictates to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then the whole speed to market thing is a real thing. Well, you that know, was actually going to be, that was my next question, right? So, okay. So yeah. for the most majority of people listening, I would imagine self-publishing sounds like the route we would all be interested in going. I know for me, that's definitely, I've come to that conclusion. Um, at least for, you know, my first couple of books, let's put it that way. Um, so, okay, so now we're going to self-publishing route. We're talking about rapid publishing, right? You guys were able to do it in 30 days, and I'm sure now being... Which we don't recommend, by the yeah. way. That's not what we <laughs> do with our clients. We have the framework. So let's talk about what are, like, what are some ways? Was there some, some ways that we could actually go about doing this? Uh, you know, what are some tips you could give us? Yeah, so... And one really easy way to write a book. Well, first, start by looking at the content that you already have. Um, if you if you have a blog and you look at those blog posts and you go, gosh, with a little bit of tweaking, each of those blog posts could be a chapter of my book, and I could very quickly create a manuscript using that. Uh, or do you have training videos? Do you have online content? Is there a speech that you presented that you recorded or can record? Um, so first you want to look to that, those pieces, that collateral to see if those things can be quickly assembled into a book. Um, another way to do it is to just think of the frequently asked questions of your industry. Um, so that's how we created our first book, which was called the video tractor beam. Okay. Our video marketing book. So we just went through what are the questions people always ask us about video marketing? And then you start looking at now what questions should people be asking? Okay. Um, and those questions there give you a chance to really show your expertise. Mm -hmm. And you can take this formula. We, we call it the FAQ model. Um, some, uh, uh, which, and by the way, I learned this from Mike Koenigs. Uh, and it's, he, would, he would craft it around 10 frequently asked questions and then 10 should have asked questions. Um, I don't think there's any magic to the number as long as you have enough content to create your book. Um, but doing it this way, I mean, honestly, we sat down and we created that content in a day um, around the frequently asked questions of video marketing to start our process, to get it out of your head so that now an editor can help and a writer can help, those types of things. Um, and in doing it this way, we can uh, take a book from an idea to published and number one Amazon bestselling author in about a 90-day window of time. Uh, and that that smokes uh, the traditional publishing industry where you might see it two years from now. 
yeah. it is realistic. It is realistic because sometimes people come back, oh yeah, you can have your book done in two hours. Like, yeah, I mean, you can, you can definitely answer questions for two hours. You can go through this FAQ model and have your book for, for in, in two hours. Great. But that's, but there's more to the story. So when you, when you hear that 90 day, it's just cause a lot of people are like, oh, I want it done now. Well, yeah, but there's, there's things that do take time. And there's yeah. process. But I do want to rewind to something really, really important and powerful that you, that you threw in there. And that's the should have asked questions to establish and build credibility. So I, I, I have a, a flooring business that I do on a side. And when, when, when you meet with me and I'm, I'm showing you your floor, I'm going to answer your questions and I'm going to give you the questions that you didn't know you were supposed to ask. And I'm going to let you know why you, you're supposed to ask them. And then if you want to go to anybody else, make sure you ask these questions of yourself and of the, of the person you want to do the work or whatever. And so in doing that, when you leave, they're like, this is the person I want because they understand my problem, my situation on a level that I don't. So that, that rising entrepreneurs is a huge, huge, huge value that ever just dropped for you is yeah. to, right. Is, is to answer the should have asked questions to establish authority. Um, and I having my assistant bring me one of our books uh, that this model can be carried across every industry. And those should have asked are those points of distinction and absolutely destroy the competition. Right, just out absolutely because the competition either a can't answer those questions or doesn't want to answer those questions, right? And I think that's why Nathan, you're telling your telling your clientele to you know to uh, make sure to ask those questions of them. So um, case in point, so this book here is uh, by a realtor, and it's just called Cracking the Home Sellers Code, and it's the secret combination to unlocking your home's maximum value. This was an FAQ book. It was built off a few hours of interview about it. Then we had a writer clean it up, make it look professional, expand it, uh, and, you know, and then launch that. And then one of the amazing things about a book, right, is how many people are influenced by a book without ever having read it? <laughs> you know, it's like, like Nathan, you're, a, you're a, a voracious reader now, but there was a time where you weren't. But I look at your bookshelf behind you, I see a lot of books, okay? I'm just going to wager a guess that there are a lot of books there that you've not read, but you're still influenced by them because Legit, you're like, so I'm going to bring one out. Blue ocean strategy. I understand it. I know the concept it's there. I flipped through it, but I know everything I know from other stuff and it's still, but it's still like worthy of being on the shelf. Yes, yep. you're absolutely correct. I, I, yeah. That's why there's a, a chapter in here called the power of the unread book because <laughs> Not, yeah. You know, the sad truth is most people will not read your book. Um, most people who encounter your book, they'll have seen your name on the cover or your picture or they've heard you were the author of it or whatever. And they'll be influenced even never having opened it about your expertise on that topic. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it just cracks me up. And then people never get rid of them, right? Like, like it's like sacrilegious almost, right, to get rid of a book. Um, unlike any other marketing thing we may ever create, right? I could create a gazillion different marketing things or give someone marketing gizmos like a mug or a pen or a whatever, and they'll serve a purpose for exposure perhaps, but there's no emotional connection. They don't impart expertise. They, um, and they don't last, they get thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. Darn it. These books, they stay around forever. And even when you do throw them away, what do you do? Give them to goodwill. <laughs> right, give them to Goodwill. They're still around. Goodwill. That's Crazy. actually how for, for a couple of years, that's how I decided what books to read is I would go to an affluent community with Goodwill books and I would assume that what affluent people were reading and donating was, was better than what I was getting in other places and I would assume that what showed up there would be the most popular things because they would filter down. And so, and so before I... I was at a stage where I needed to learn for specific things. I serendipitously went and, and grabbed those books. So you're right. Even so, so those books that, that are influenced me, a lot of ones that I didn't read were like, Oh, I've heard about this book and I know it's important. Let me collect it. But you see, or you like the cover, you like what it, you like the title and you're like, I, one day I'm going to need this thing and you collect it and you bring it home and it sits there and it waits for you. And, and even if you're not ready for it, even if you don't read it, it's, 
sitting there and, and you're, you brush by it and it's, yeah, you're right. It's influencing. It's pretty cool. Really cool concept there. That's awesome, man. So listen, I, I, we have a new section of the podcast that I want to, uh, I want to lay on you Everett because Nathan, Nathan's brought this thing to a whole nother level of value for our listeners. So, um, this is going to be a little bit more though about your journey. So like less about that. How can we help other people write a book? This is more about you and your journey. So going back to that original train of thought, but Nathan, you mind uh, jumping in with the old pearls and perils? Yeah. So this is, this is fun. And so basically in the, in the broken road of becoming a, an ent- a rising entrepreneur, starting literary marketing, helping people with books, you've, You've traveled a path that no one else has ever traveled. No one else will ever travel again. But on that path, you've run into perils and obstacles that have slowed you down, that have stopped you, that have, that have gotten in your way. And somehow or other, you've figured out a way to get by them. And so what we're hoping for is what is the biggest peril that you ran into in your entrepreneurial journey? And then what is the pearl of wisdom that we can use to either avoid that pitfall or climb out of it? All right. So I think, it, it, wow, this is good. This is really good. So a, a psychologist one time told me that entrepreneurs have to have a certain level of ADD in order to be effective. They have to have a certain level so that they get distracted enough to see an opportunity and go, hmm, what is that? And let me learn more about it. And let me start going down that road to check it out. That is also the great peril. Because in doing that, you very quickly, and you guys have seen this over and over, right? You'll, you'll find something you have a little bit of success with, then you get distracted by this thing and go down that road. When this thing that you had a little bit of success with, if you just hammered down, you'd start to have a lot of success with it. In fact, I remember uh, Brendan Burchard likes to use the, I, you know, the whole word picture of a magnifying glass you know, and the sun and you're trying to light some leaves on fire. You can't do it if you're going from leaf to leaf to leaf, but if you can stay camp on one leaf and light it on fire, it'll light the rest on fire, right? So that great peril is also that great gift of that distractibility of an entrepreneur to see opportunity, but the, but, but getting dragged down, it is so dangerous. So for me, the great solution for that was a mastermind group. Um, and uh, participating in a mastermind group put me in an environment where on the one hand, there's a lot, lots of entrepreneurial ADD going on because someone will say, Hey, I tried this thing or Hey, did you see this thing? And blah, blah, blah. And that whole shiny object syndrome kicks in. Right. But also you get to watch those members. They've already tried some of those things and they have ruled some of those things out and you don't need to go down that road. And I've just found a mastermind group to be probably the most critical business decision I ever made. So that, um, I could balance that distractibility with focus and accountability. That's, that's all. That, listen, that was so good. Listen, first of all, that was so good that I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap that back up into value for you because so, so, so one of the advantages of going with the big publishing house is to have a team on your side because you can't do it all on your own. Right. And so, and so, so when you, when you partner up with someone like Everett who's been doing this a lot and who knows how to go through the process, he told you, he told you um, about how like we did this interview and we had somebody clean it up and then extend it and do all those things. That's the power of a mastermind of the network and, and community of somebody who's been doing this for a while. And so that, that power of a mastermind, I just... That pearl and pearl was so good. It made me, me sing so much that you dropped so much value that I want people to know, because I thought about this earlier, that, that when, when you partner up with somebody who knows what they're doing, loves what they're doing, is looking at the trends, and, and, you, and, you, and you get with them, you, you partner with their mastermind of, of dedication and obsession over a thing. And so, so you are 100% right that, that as entrepreneurs, we go this way and that way, and we have the shiny, the shiny syndrome. And, and, and to know when you've seen somebody else work through it and you don't have to go through that, that saves you time, effort, energy, and money. But you can't just, you can't just, you have to hear the story of how they failed through it before you want to not do it, right? You have to, you have to know and trust this person. That that, and that's where, where a mastermind group, can can do that for you and so 
And so you, you specifically can help with the mastermind of publishing and, and Corey and I have, have mastermind groups that we participate in that can help with other things. But I just wanted to, to circle back and give you back value for thanking the, the community, you know, for giving the community so much uh, on that, that Pearl of Wisdom. Thank yeah, you so much, Nathan. That's huge. I want to jump on that too, because masterminds, I mean, I, I actually didn't know you were going to go there with that. With that program. <laughs> Sorry. But masterminds <laughs> are by far one of the most impactful things in my life in terms of entrepreneurial growth and, and actually stepping into the business person that I you know, need to become to become you know, successful the way that I want to become successful. And I think not only is it that you are now a part of a group of people that have done certain things before you so they can help you avoid those traps. But also when we see these shiny things, right, this is a trusted board of advisors that we can go to and say, Hey, I have this idea, right? I found out, or I just saw this opportunity over here. What do you guys think about it? Like, I just, I just came up across with this idea. What do you guys think about it? And it's a group of folks that have your best interest in mind, right? We all have each other's best interest in mind. So they're going to look at that on top of everything else that you have been going through and doing, right? And maybe it's not a good idea, or maybe you can look at it this way. Or So that uh, feedback and that sounding board also is what makes the mastermind super, super valuable. And I just wanted to go ahead and throw uh, a shameless plug in there. If you guys are listening um, or if you're watching, we do have a Facebook mastermind that you guys can join for free. If you wanna check it out, just go to myfbgroup.com. That's our little Facebook community, our little Facebook mastermind and Everett. Um, this is also something I'd love to have you come in as well because the whole reason Thank why you. I set this up is to try to connect uh, and create a little bit more engagement for our listeners as well as our guests. So to bring them both into a common area. Um, you know, Facebook is one of those social platforms that some people dive into and some people don't. So if you're there, by all means, guys, go check that out. Um, but yeah, no, my, my FB group, like my Facebook group dot com. That's exactly right. Just my FB group dot com. Nice so job. I want to talk, about, I want to talk about oh, something. I just feel that one when I saw it. <laughs> I want yeah, that was a good plug. And I want to I want to throw in I want to throw in something there too. Um, shiny book syndrome. So, so like you said, this mastermind can help you stay focused. So you said 90 days to get your book out on Amazon bestseller. And look, I'm going to talk to you guys and entrepreneurs from the heart because I love you and I'm one of you. So you just know how hard it is to stay focused on one thing for 90 days. Sometimes you just need to, if you could just do that, it's not that you can't create 17 books in those 90 days. You've, it's, it's taking the one idea and following through. Right. And so, so having a mastermind group or a community or coaches or a, a guide, a system that brings you through so that you have that focus because, because like you said, it's the gift and the curse. And so, but you can't, you can't get the gift until you follow through and deliver on the, on the one thing, right? And so once you get that thing, you can move on to the next one. But having that group, having that, that, um, that system to, to keep you on track is just, it's so valuable in whatever you're doing, right? And, and having that accountability of I'm committing to this thing. I invested financially. I'm investing my time. I'm investing my energy to make sure that this thing happens. And I'm going to do that by finding somebody who's done it before, who's great at what they do and has a system and process that I can follow. Like that's, that's powerful. And so, so if you, if you've ever thought about a book, if you've ever considered, um, like, I just know that it's powerful. I know, and you don't know where to go. Like, just real quick, what is, like, where do I start then? Like, I know this is powerful, and I don't necessarily know what to write about or whatever. Like, where do I go? <laughs> where do I start? How do I get into right. it? So, uh, first, if, if I'm always welcome. Uh, I mean, I'm always willing to have a conversation with somebody about their book. And you can just access that through my website. If you ever go to ignitepress.us, ignitepress.us, You'll see a button there where you can schedule a book consultation with me for free. So we'll just do that. Um, and so uh, that's one way to go. You know, the deal is, is that we are, a, we call ourselves a hybrid publisher because we feel like we are the best of the traditional publishing world and the best of the self-publishing world. Um, that you don't have to know how to do everything. We'll guide you through it. We have editors. We have our layout team. We have a process for creating amazing cover artwork and for then publishing your book so it's in every online channel pretty much. You know, and and then doing that Amazon bestseller run. We have all of this as a process, but at the end of the day, 
you still own 100% of your rights. You can do whatever the heck you want with your content. Um, and, uh, and you also get all of your royalties. And so there's, you know, there's not somebody standing between you and those things like in a traditional publishing uh, role. So, um, and then as far as like next steps, it's, it really depends on where you are with your book. Some people just know, I need a book for my business. I don't know what it is. Great, let's talk. Other people have been writing that book for years and stop, they're starting and then they stop and they start and then they stop and they, you know, and our first publishing client, he'd been writing a book for three years. When I met him three years later, he was still writing that book. He didn't finally, he didn't finally get off his duff and write the book until a cover had been designed and I sent him a completely blank book. Okay. All blank pages inside. Okay. And I said, okay, Frank, it's the, you know, the cover's done. Now you fill it. Yeah. And finally he got off his duff and published his book. Super um, cool. So some of our clients are in that spot and others have a manuscript. They're finishing it up. They've been using this downtime to finish it up. Now they just want to know what are my options for publishing and how do we go forward? And that's the other client we work with. But I will say, and it comes down to Corey, what you had said earlier in the introduction about allowing people to participate in this process while focusing on their own areas of giftedness. Our clients, their time is too valuable to be having to reinvent the wheel for self-publishing. Uh, they, they, you know, they are successful in something that they do and they are either leveraging that or they're starting off a new thing and they don't want the book to support it. Um, and they know that they could benefit from someone with expertise in that process rather than kind of stumbling through on their own. And I have no problem with people stumbling through on their own. That's how I started, right? Um, it's how we all started with something that we've done, but you know, it's that the, the, the analogy I've heard is, you know, if, if you want to build a new house, are you the type of person who's going to be the general contractor for your new house? Or are you likely to hire a contractor to manage that process for you? Right. So it's just, some people go either way and it's great. I, I love both ways. So, so you have teams. So, so kind of just, uh, so you can help these, these three different, you know, there's three different kind of levels of it and you can help um, people at the different levels. So kind of how do you work with people? Do you have courses? Do you have groups? Do you have, how do you deliver the, the value of your vast experience for people? You know, Nathan, that's a great question that no interviewer have, has ever asked me. So I appreciate that. Um, our process is very one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, typically the client is going to be interfacing with me directly or with my publishing coordinator directly. But at different phases, they'll be, in, they'll be working one-on-one -on -one again with different levels of our team. So when it goes into editing, they'll be interfacing with the editor and my publishing coordinator in that interactive process. Um, layout, because layout is less fluid, um, it tends to be through my publishing coordinator. Uh, but no, we really don't do it through courses. We really do it you really do it one-on-one -on -one or, you know, it's one team member with, with our client at a time. That's what they call the white glove approach. <laughs> oh, there you go. I like that. I'm gonna, Can I use that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. so we, no, no, that's awesome, man. And I, I just, I wanted to just mention real quick too, because Everett, clearly you care about your clients. I mean, you showing that empty book with the cover <laughs> on it, like, I feel like that's what I need a little bit, you know, to like get me motivated to actually doing this. Cause I've, I've been wanting to create this podcast for like three years before I actually started recording the episodes. And I've been wanting to write a book for even longer than that. But now that I have the podcast, I'm like, I've got all of, like, we've got this content. We need to put it into a book format. So absolutely Corey. But I just, uh, I just wanted to yeah. touch on that. You know, you taking the time to create a blank book with a cover on it to send to your client, to get him motivated. Like that, that's touching to me because that shows that you actually care. Um, and so I just wanted to, I wanted to honor that. But then on top of that, like you said, writing a book, a lot of people spend years doing it, right? It takes time. And because you you really are pouring some of your heart and soul into it, like doing it on your own, like it's one of those things that you'll never be able to finish because it, it's, you know, it's your baby. Like you'll never be able to call it perfect or done or good enough. Right. right. And so right. by having a team, like a traditional publisher, right? Like you guys are the hybrid model. So like having that team that knows all of the steps required for self-publishing can get your book out there onto all the platforms that it needs to be on, can get you your, your cover done, can get you the editing. Like 
that's that's the way to go. You try and write a book and self publish it yourself, you're gonna, you know, five years later, you'll pick your head up and you still won't have it done. So. Well, a team, a team that supports you too, like the one on one, the small team. So the difference is, because again, with the traditional publisher, are you are you James Patterson? Are you Stephen King? Are you Malcolm Gladwell? Because because they're gonna have those people get one-on-one individual attention. And then the other people, it's less. Like, it depends on where you, so, so that's the other thing, is you have to look at, if you, if you have a team, you wanna look at what kind of attention are they giving you? How are they, how are they supporting you? How are they looking out for you? Because that book thing may not work for everybody, but that shows that you are trying. You, you see the gift in them and you're like, I know, you just have a block. It's not, it's not that the book isn't great. You, it's there. You just, you have a block and I have seen with all my clients now dozens of blocks. And so I can try this. I can try that. I can try because like you said, Corey, it's your baby. You got this thing and you don't know how to let go or you don't know how to say that's good enough or you don't want to let it graduate. And so, so you don't know how to go. And so sometimes you need someone to say, no, 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 they're ready. It's ready. That these blocks. And so you need someone who can see the blocks that you don't see to remove them and get them out of your way. You, you, you also brought to light a few things and a couple important nuggets here is first, who, who really needs a publisher to be the green light on a project? Okay. You know, your brand better than anybody knows your brand. Okay. And you know how you want to leverage the book and you really need a publisher to be the, to, you know, you're going to shop it around to find a green light on that for someone who thinks the way you think about your book. Uh, that is a real challenge. The other thing is, and, and I hope this is a freeing thing. So I hope people listen to this phrase. There's so many people that are frozen trying to write the book when what they really need right now is a book. Okay. And I don't mean a bad book. I just mean that, that opus, that, that, that masterpiece that they have in their mind that they want to create someday it doesn't necessarily have to be the book they create today. The book they create today is the one that is the positioning piece to elevate their brand. It's the marketing piece to get in front of people and to stay in front of people. It's the conversion piece that once people start to read it, they go, wow, this guy really knows their stuff. His stuff. I really want to engage with this person and do business. It's also a stick piece. Right, you know, talking about marketing and stick factor, you know, it's it's something that helps people stay in your brand once they've come into your brand because they're like, well, this person's the expert. I really, you know, look for this book. Here's this book. It is so many things, and that can be done with a book, and let the book be the next one. Okay, we're happy to write the book, but the book is the one that people really get frozen on, and that they spend years and years and years writing, and nine times out of ten, never finish. Well, here's the thing. Sometimes you need a book to get the experience you need to become good enough to write the book. Very. Because that's that maybe what you're dealing true. with. Genius, Nathan. Absolutely. So a- a- absolutely. I appreciate yeah. that. And what that was was permission. And the way I see that is I needed that. I needed to hear that. So I appreciate that, Everett. And I know that other people listening needed to hear that as well because we stand in our own way, right? And, and I've got this grandiose idea for a book I wanna create, and it's, it's gonna be amazing, you guys. I, I'm telling you, it's gonna be the best book you've ever read, right? It'll be you know, on every top bestsellers list. But I don't, I don't know where to start, right? And so it's like, just get a book out, man. Just write something. Just get started. Uh, uh, absolutely, you see, it, oh, you see it over and over and over. You know, it's like you, you uh, talk about Russell Brunson, right? He's just released, his latest book, well, that wasn't his first book, and I don't even know what his first book was because none of us, you know, like, like uh, I don't think it was. Um, uh, potato. I think it was what was the one before? Yeah, the it's, potato gun, right? Ebook or something. There you go, the potato gun one, right? So, but look, um, even I, if you, yeah. even if if you bought his box set now. You didn't get the, he even rewrote the books that you're getting now. These are the second edition of the that same was, books. So, so that was another point I was going to bring up, Nathan, is that the beauty of publishing the way we publish, we're leveraging print on demand technology so that you can get your books at the lowest possible pr- price. So my book here, um, you know, uh, Corey, I sent it, I sent you a copy and I want you to think that it cost me 15 bucks just, you know, to get that book. It cost me two dollars and seventy-five cents. Okay, 
And how much can you love on your clients and get in front of prospects when it's two dollars and seventy five cents? You know, heck, that's half as much as one of the, as some fancy coffee mug, some fancy you know branded coffee stickers mug. Stickers from like Sticker Mule, it's basically going to cost you that much, you know? Right. Oh, I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Um, and then the other part is, is it's not in stone. These are not printed on stone tablets. Um, these can be updated as your business and life changes, and I promise it will. That's right? Cool. That thing you write in that book today, five years from now, you're going to go, I wish I'd changed that. Well, guess what? You can. And you, which through traditional publishing, I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. You know, and the only way they're going to do that is if they sold out of all the initial printing and they see the market is there that they need another printing. And even then they may say, yeah, we, we don't really like your chain. So I don't think that's going to happen. Um, yeah. So, so this is a great and fluid thing. We even have people creating special editions of their book for key customers. So uh, if you're going to be speaking in front of some organization and there's going to be 500 people there and you go, you know, I'd love to have 500 copies of a book branded to that organization, maybe with a foreword written by the president of that company, you know, then it's like, oh, wow. So we can, we can pull that kind of stuff off. Uh, we don't do it all the time, but it's, it's a doable thing for the right client. That's really, really fascinating. Actually, that's, that's something, I mean, I thought about similar uh, in terms of like, when you, like if I was to go on a guest podcast, for instance, like you would want to come up with an offer for each individual show you go on, right? That matches to that show and that demographic and that audience. But this is something that's like, it's, it's taking that to a whole nother level. That's such a cool idea. So it's like special edition prints for certain audiences that you may be going and doing speeches in front of or events for or something yeah. like that. That's really a, that's a neat idea for sure. And, and I'll throw one last thing in, cause I know we're you know, time gets tight on these, but another thing is just remember if you're a speaker, bundling your book first your book gets you speaking jobs because it shows you the expertise it's that endorsement that uh that you have that social proof but bundling it with speaking opportunities allows you to increase your fees because they say hey would would you like everyone to get a book and they go really is that possible you go, yeah you know the book sells for 15 bucks on amazon and i can get it for you at a discount for let's say nine bucks a copy and they're like yeah let's do that well, you bought it at $2.75 a copy, and you're going to sell it at a discount at $9 a copy. You just, you just increase your because speaking. You just bulk so yeah, you just bulk sold, you know, 1,500 books at once. <laughs> so that's pretty yeah. sweet. Well, listen, uh, you're right, Everett. This is, we are getting towards the end of our time here, but I sincerely appreciate you, man, and all of the, the wisdom and, you know, just book genius that you brought onto the show today. We do have one last question for you, which we ask all of our guests that come on. And this is really, you know, I'd like you to take a moment to think about this, but if you were to go back in time, maybe five or 10 years ago, and you could sit down with yourself, right? And, and give yourself one pearl of wisdom, what would that be? Five or 10 years ago. Wow. Um, I'll say if it was longer than that, it would be mastermind. Okay. All right. If, I, if you were talking to me 20 years ago, I would say mastermind. Um, and I wish I'd known about it. I, you know, I'd only heard the term, never participated one tw in, in one 20 years ago. Um, and I would, I would say, I would say that I think the, I think the other one was is simply maintain focus on that, which is important. Um, and by, and that isn't, that isn't what the income, you know, income and expenses are to maintain focus on that, which is important, whether it's your family, your friends, it's, um, it's, you know, it's those things that are really critical. I love to work. You guys probably love to work. I will be one of those guys probably in my seventies, eighties, I'll still be working, but I still need to keep my focus on that, which is really important. So um, I think those, I think those two things, mastermind and keep the main thing, the main thing. That's awesome. That's hey, awesome. Everett, thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate all the value in your time. Thank you guys. Cause this is wonderful. I appreciate it. Yeah, this has been a, this has been a blast and guys, every, all the uh, links and all the resources and stuff we talked about in this interview will be linked down in the show notes below. So don't worry about that. You can go check that stuff out down below, but Everett, your website was ignitepress.us, right? 
That's so, correct. Yeah, anybody that's interested uh, at all, or even just if you are thinking about the possibility of bringing a book into your business, have a chat with Everett and see, you know, he'll be able to answer any questions you have. And obviously, he's uh, an open source of knowledge. So definitely go check him out. Everett, thank you again, man. Really appreciate you, brother. And Guys, really thank you again for having me. And, and thank you for the pluses that you added to my stuff. You know, as far as, as kind of pulling out those things that are most valuable to share uh, with your audience. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, brother. Well, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.